Hi, my name is Simone Jardim and uh, we are here in Valencia Bonita today, Bonita Springs, Florida, uh, to give you some tips on the new and improved Pickleball Tutor, uh, the Plus. And uh, I hope you have fun uh, watching these tips and hopefully learning how to use some of these drills at home. All right, hello everybody. Uh, this is Simone Jardim again, coming to you from Valencia Bonita and beautiful Bonita Springs. And what we're gonna be doing with the new and improved uh, Pickleball Tutor Plus is that we're gonna be working on several things. So I have two people uh, that are going to be working on their volleys. And we have two little tools to help them work on their volleys, but first, let me show you here the ball machine. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is because I have two people, so I'm gonna be doing the oscillation with two lines because I'm gonna have uh, Brad on the right side and I'm gonna have Michelle on the left side. So that's where we're gonna be. Then the next thing is we're gonna put a little bit of top spin. This is coming as a third shot drive. So then you wanna put a little bit of top spin. So I'm gonna put it at a two here. And then the interval, I don't want to give them too much time in between. So I'm actually going to speed up the process a little bit here. And then the speed, I'm going to give them a good drive. So I'm going to start, let's start at six and we'll see how that speed, speed goes. Okay, so now here we got, and Michelle, you're going to come over here. She's got the back swing solution. The reason why we're using that is so, because again, teaching all the time, especially my tennis players, and I, to be honest, everybody, uh, when you see a wiffle ball coming at you, the first thing you wanna do is take a big swing at it. So what she's going to be doing, as you can see, her arms are sitting in front, and especially her elbows are out in front. Instead of taking the paddle behind her it's not gonna allow for the elbow to tuck in to the body because again it's sitting here it's prohibiting you from doing that so then her swing is gonna look out in front and she's gonna one key here is to make sure that that wrist lays back a little bit and then it's a push okay on the back end of course it's a little easier because of the fact that we have our left shoulder if you're right-hander Left shoulder is on the way, so to take a big a back swing, you're less likely to do it. But this is a reminder that we don't want to allow those elbows to tuck into the body and come behind us. So then it makes your swing, your, your contact point, to be out in front, nice and small, and then it's a push. So for that, for that swing, for that, uh, sorry, for the punch volley, you're looking to keep that continental grip and punch it forward with the forehand and keep the face of the paddle. That's why I want that wrist and it's going forward, mm -hmm. okay? So wherever that paddle face goes is where your ball is gonna go. Now, one thing as well for us to think about here is that you, the lower the ball is, the more you wanna be with it. So, but the paddle, that's the part, the paddle head actually goes with it. Mm -hmm. It's not a cocked wrist because otherwise that ball is gonna go straight down. It's actually, we talk about this a lot, wherever the ball is, this is where your paddle goes. So if the ball comes here and it's lower here, then you drop the head of the paddle and push. Okay, okay. and now, Brad, Brad has got the grip trainer. And what it is, is to continue to use the continental grip. You put it onto the paddle, and then it doesn't allow Brad to move his hand around, which again, uh, unfortunately, what we see a lot of the times is that you get into the point and all of a sudden grip is changing and then we end up with knuckles. As a teacher, when I'm on the other side of the net, the last thing that I want to see is straight knuckles across the paddle. Because again, that volley is going to be limiting your ability to do only one thing, which is to hit anything that comes into your body. Great, but if you start to get better and play better players, they hit the ball over here almost impossible well it is impossible to hit a forehand not only that definitely a lot of people talk about elbow uh, injuries and wrist injuries having this grip all of a sudden you're creating all sorts of trouble 
So having the proper technique is extremely important. The other thing for my tennis peeps out there is that a lot of the times we try to go to the ball and unfortunately you can't. All right, that's the rule of the game. You have to make sure that the ball comes to you because you cannot step into the kitchen to take the ball out of the air. And momentum shift also, just, just so you understand, there's a rule that if you hit your volley and you step into the kitchen, you're also not allowed to do that. Now, both of you, I want you both on that ready position. You should feel like you're ready to catch that ball versus standing up and the ball is gonna play you. Here we go. Good punch. That's it. Nice. Try not to allow that. Try not to turn your body. Good. Yeah. That's better. Now push. Nice, Brad. Good. Maybe even chest forward a little bit more and get that ball out in front. There you go. Even more. Exaggerate. Okay. Good. See that contact point, that's it. So the paddle goes, your body doesn't go, but the paddle meets out there. And this is a great way for repetition because again, they are gonna, you know, and if they have a helper, especially picking up balls, they can go for, you know, solid 20 minutes, 30 minutes working on their volleys and, and somebody's picking up balls. So a good way would be, let's say, uh, as they're working and Michelle, then we're gonna switch spots here. So I'm gonna get in, you hit one more. Perfect, then I'll get in, okay? And then we'll rotate, so again. And then Brad, let's say, Brad wants to take a break and get a, a couple of sip of water. We just keep, keep rolling with the machine. There you go, there you go, good, nice, got it. Good, keep it, keep that body forward. There you go. Okay, so keep that body forward. That's it, nice. Now I take a break, bread comes in. Good. That's it, keep that paddle out in front. And you can see, you can use any ball with a ball machine. So the pickleball tutor will accept any balls. Uh, nice, good, better. Keep that swing nice and small, better bread. Yeah, more like a solid hit in the middle of the paddle. Good. Yeah. And again, Michelle coming from tennis, sometimes the, the habit of turning those hips, turning your body, that contact point gets behind you. So trying to stay more square, so that way that contact point is in front. Okay, and as you can see, the more you guys did it, the better your volleys got. And this is not very taxing on the body, because you're not moving nearly as much as some of the other drills or even playing games. So to me, a good day that you wanna take the ball machine out to do a practice and you wanna get some good quality, good time on court, and you wanna work on your volleys, you can do this for 20, 30 minutes. And I, I as, a, as a coach, I would feel comfortable enough and, and again, good enough because you got some teaching aids and maybe you don't, but the main thing is, is that because you're not gonna get tired, that I know that your technique is gonna be more sound. And then again, you're focusing as long as again, you're not coming out and taking some big swings at it. You're just working on that technique, sharpening it, making sure that you're nice and compact, those hips are staying forward, you're punching it out in front and we're not changing that grip not tucking the elbow in, right? So that is a great way to come out, get 20, 30 minutes of volleys. You can do two people, you can do three like we did where we rotating in. Uh, as many people help, you know, the one that is out can be picking up balls while the other two do it. And then rotating in. So that's a great way to use the pickleball uh, tutor plus for some volleys. Thank you for tuning in and see you next time on the courts.